Hello, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to solve this equation, which says y squared minus 9 over y minus 9 is equal to 10. So let's start off by making 10 or rewrite 10 as 10 over 1. Nothing has changed, right? So we cross multiply like so. And then we have 1 times y squared minus 9, which is also y squared minus 9. This is equal to 10 times y minus 9. So you have y squared minus 9 is equal to, what is 10 times y? That's 10y. And what is 10 times 9? That's what? 90 with the negative sign there. So let's move these two signs to the left-hand side. Or we take away 10y from this side, we add 90 to this side to get rid of these two terms from the right-hand side. So what are we going to have? y squared minus 9, then negative 10y, and then plus 90, all is equal to 0. So let's rearrange this. We have y squared minus 10y, then minus 9 plus 90 is equal to 0. Now what is negative 9 add 90? That is 81. So that will be y squared minus 10y plus 81 is equal to 0. But what are we supposed to do here? Now we want to see if we can factorize this quadratic equation and then find the values of y. So let's see if we can factorize. Let's see if, if that will work. 81, two factors of 81. 9 times 9 is 81. But when you add this to, will you get 10? No. So even if you put minus and plus in one of them, it will be 0. And this is 10. This is negative 10. So another factor of 81, 27 times 3, will give you 81. But if you put a negative sign here, or if you choose to even add 23 and 27 and 3, you won't get negative 10. So it shows that this cannot be factorized. We are going to use the formula method, which is, in this case, y is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of what? b squared minus 4ac, all divided by what? 2a. If you compare this equation with the general form of a quadratic equation, which is what? ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. A here is the coefficient of the leading term. And the leading term, the coefficient is 1. So here we can see that A is 1. What about B? B is negative 10. As you can see here, B is negative 10. And C is what? The constant term, 81. So this is 81. Let's plug in all of these values into this formula method. So Y is equal to negative, what is B? B is what? Negative 10. Write it like so. Then plus or minus. The square root of what? B is negative 10 all squared minus 4 times A is 1 and C is what? 81. All divided by what? 2 times A is 1, as you can see here. So let's simplify this. Now here, Y will be equal to what? Negative times negative 10 is 10, then plus or minus the square root of what is negative 10 squared? That's 100. So 100 minus, what is 4 times 81? Let's just, 81 times 4, this is 4. 8 times 4 is what? 32. So we have 3, 2, 4. 3, 2, 4, all divided by what? By 2. I think we can use the space. So if I take this off, so we're going to have that y is equal to what? 10 plus or minus the square root of, what is 100? Take away 3, 2, 4. That's negative 3, negative 2 to 4. From this, it looks like we are going to have an imaginary number. This is divided by 2. Okay. Then we have y is equal to 10 plus or minus. Now, this negative 2 to 4, I'm going to rewrite it as negative 1 times 2 to 4. Now, you'll agree with me that negative 1 times 2 to 4 is negative 2 to 4. Good. So, all divided by what? By 2. Now, there is an imaginary unit of an imaginary number denoted with i. i is equal to what this square root of negative 1. This is an imaginary unit. So we're going to bring in that here. y is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of what? Negative 1 times the square root of what? 2 to 4. But let me break 2 to 4 to 2 factors. When I multiply, I'll get 2 to 4. 
and one of the numbers will have to be a perfect square. I think we can use 14 and 16. You multiply this. What is this? This is 24, right? 4. 6 plus 2 is 8. This is 4. This is 1. 4, 2, and 2. 2 to 4. So we can use 14 times 16. 14 times 16. The reason why I, I chose to use 16 and 14 because 16 is a perfect square. So we have all of our 2. And y is equal to 10 plus or minus. Remember, i, which is the imaginary unit, is equal to the square root of negative 1. So I'm going to replace that with i. Then times, this can be written as what? The square root of 14 times. What is the square root of 16? That's 4. So we have, I can just write this as what? 4 root 4. So 4 root 4, 14 rather, all divided by 2. So what do we have? y is equal to, this 2, mind you, is dividing 10 and also i 4 root 14. Now we'll write it is like this 10 over 2 plus or minus 4i root 14 over what? Over 2. So 2 goes into 10, you have 5. 2 goes into 4, you have 2. And that becomes y is equal to 5 plus or minus 2i root 14. We can say therefore the values of y will be equal to 5 plus, this is plus or minus, so plus. 2i root 14 or 5, now we'll go with the negative sign, minus 2i root 14. So what does this tell you? It tells you that we do not have any real solutions. This is a complex number. This is a complex number. So we only have complex solutions to this equation. I hope you found value from this video. Kindly subscribe to this channel. For more content like this, share this video to your friends and family. I'll see you in the next one. It's bye for now.